Hey, hey, hey. This is Drippy. So this is 5,000 members on Twitter special and YouTube 1500 subscribers. I'm gonna go over all the indicators I use um, on my trading view pretty much on a daily basis. And also I'm gonna quickly go over how to draw supply and demand zones uh, on trading view. It's super simple guys. It's not gonna take uh, a lot of time. So uh, let's go. Uh, so first one, uh, I have here is volume, which is default volume. Uh, it's a must have. The second one is ATRC, which is ATR channel. And what it tells me is basically, uh, you know, like where is the price and also uh, how far, like average true range uh, on a daily time frame is it, it this is 380R. So uh, good thing about this is that it has settings here um here you can like there are a couple plots here so these three uh, this is the daily 21 ema and then this one uh you know is 180r upside 1280r upside this is uh 380r upside and then this one is downside similar so yeah it's good to calculate risk reward and also just to see uh, you know, like how much profit potential I'm looking at. So if you go to look at the four hour, it you can see here, it kind of follows this band here. So here you can see that, you know, it kind of pulled back from this ATR channel, you know, rejected. And here it, ex it was extended, came back. So it's a good gauge of like how extended the price is, you know, usually, you know, there is mean reversion theory, which tells that usually stocks, uh, the price comes back to daily 21 to test. So that's a good entry spot. That's what I look for. So yeah, that's ATRC. I don't keep it on always. It's just for calculating risk reward, profit potential and all those things. And then finally you have the Ripster EMA cloud. And I think a lot of people have asked me this, like, so, uh, like, uh, I think these are the default values and I don't know, it might have changed it sometime while I was messing around, but, uh, so here are the settings first of all for me I have selected the first four here and then uh, in the style section I have select unselected all of this uh, I have just like cloud one cloud two cloud three and cloud five and then um, the values are 8 9 5 13 34 50 72 89 180 and 200 so you can copy it or you can use your own that's what my values are and i have other set of values on vivo so i get a good mix of both uh and uh, in my opinion i think this is the default one so let's move on um uh to the other ones on the down so yeah if this one is squeeze momentum divergences so this is basically ttm squeeze but it also has the rsi divergence uh shown here automatically so that's good to know you know like it saves me some time i don't have to create it myself i mean it's not 100 percent like accurate but i really pay attention to it like maybe on a higher time frame if i'm swinging something and then I, on top of that you know like uh here uh, you can add indicator on top of indicator so i added here uh, now there were four emas so i just added like uh, uh two of them um uh, 921 i think i've disabled the other ones medium and slow so entry and fast so 9 and 21 is just to give me a gauge of like where is the trend going you don't really need to do that um and then finally, uh, you know, on the bottom, uh, it's a standard RSI, no changes. And this one is uh, like, so the name here is, is not like the title is misleading. The name is actually uh, volume plus R wall by time of day. And this is by Zen and Art of Trading. And then you can go read the whole uh, theory about it. It basically has couple modes. I, I use the heat map one. It gives me idea like how much is the relative volume for example it's calculating based on time frame rather than um, uh, 
on a daily basis for so for what i mean by that is that here on asan on asan you can see last five minutes five fifteen minutes right this five minute five minute five minute you can see that relative volume here these this one uh is five point five times the relative volume of average of this plus this plus this plus this and the last value so last five values it takes so it's time frames aggregated that way uh, i think that's the uh, theory behind it i haven't messed around much with these indicators i just use them for conviction you know you don't really need to use them you can manually gauge these volume bars and see like how strong is the volume so it doesn't really matter much but it's good to have and you can set alerts on it so that way you can have like let's say you're watching 10 stocks you can set alert on relative volume for each and uh, like let's say two times or three times and then that way you can get alerts that which one has the strongest relative volume on that day i don't really use it that much but it's good to have um remember we need to repeat the process every day so i don't i don't want to create relative volume uh, alerts for 15 stocks i'm watching every day it's just too much of a hassle i just use manual like scan um and then finally i have the macd indicator here uh which one you know everyone knows about it it's gonna skip that one okay so let's quickly go over how to create demand and supply zones that was also another question a lot of folks have asked me so one sec uh let me change this uh settings here one sec to circle and reduce this size okay so uh, let's go to the uh like uh, i always start with um uh, weekly and monthly higher time frames in this case you know there is not really any pullback so uh let's go to the weekly candle so yeah so where would be the demand on the weekly zone right um i'm not gonna go in depth over how to draw and like where uh, like you know like uh on every time frame but you should do it there are a lot of videos online to do that but i have uh so if you go to this here the i have this rect rectangle tool here so first of all if you um yeah so it's as simple as that and the settings i change so if you draw by default right it's extend right and left is 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 disabled i think so i enable it and this is my default value uh default template for it you can save as default and like that's how I have it and then there you go it's a demand zone and you don't have to worry about time frames because it, it it's propagated on every time frame so yeah uh, that's super easy and you can change the color for let now let's say you're drawing supply zone it's simple this is a supply here right here uh, and you can go change the color so yeah it doesn't take a lot of time it's simple don't rely on indicators they never give you correct gauge so this is on a daily time frame right and then also uh you know you can see that another demand zone would be this area right here uh, because you know price couldn't break below this support area for a light so this is a demand zone and then uh this another one right you know is a is another demand zone around here because it was previous resistance and now it's support it's gonna act as support so yeah and if you go to a lower time frame um you can see here that this was this area right here was acting as previous support then it acted as resistance and now it's gonna act as support here look the bounce it bounce back so the more the number of touches the stronger the conviction so this is another demand zone here and the lower the time frame the the weaker the zones are like higher the time frame the stronger the zones are so you can even color match accordingly like let's say that you on a higher time frame you want to denote stronger values then you can select a darker shade uh, of green 
and that way you can you know just mess around with it just play around it's not perfect science you know you can the size doesn't really matter it's just a rough estimate doesn't mean that as soon as it enters demands or you're gonna buy calls it's just a way to know that yeah like the price is around demand zone there's a chance that there might be a strong bounce from there or a supply zone uh, pullback so here uh, you know like for example look this was a previous support and now it's acting as supply here uh, so this is another uh, you know supply zone a mini supply zone and you can call it a resistance you can call it supply zone um, you know supply zones are better for in my opinion because uh, resistance uh, and support zones and levels uh, you know I I have it on on Vivo on my other platform so I don't really draw it here and then another thing is that you know it can get crowded with all these uh, you know like demand zones and stuff uh, so every day I kind of hide everything and then look at the chart again because I want to see the raw price action uh, and then you can hide it here so yeah so anyway guys hopefully you get the picture and you know you can get things going on for next week make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye